Good morning, good people. It is Thursday. And I start this live showing you this painting. Why? Because today we're going to be preparing our canvas. And so that you can see the scale of it, I'm going to pan back a little bit so that you can see some of the room. This canvas is huge. It's over a meter. And good morning, Apuba. I don't know how to pronounce people's names when they're not English. I'm sorry if I, if I don't pronounce your names correctly. But anyway, good morning and welcome. So this morning you are seeing a painting that I did of a well-known wine estate in Cape Town. It's called Hood Constantia. It is the oldest wine estate in the country. And I am starting here because morning Sharon, I want to show you what we will be preparing our canvas for today. So this is a really big canvas and I want to show you, so I'm going to go close up. Um, if you see in the roof, there are some diagonal sort of brush strokes and possibly on the building. I'm not sure if the lighting is picking it up. I'm hoping it will, but the best place to see it, I'm going to try and catch it in an angle. Do you see those under brush strokes? Morning, Vanessa. So although my building roof is going downwards, I have all sorts of brush strokes and I'm going to try and see if you can catch it in the light of my trees. This is the only time that reflection is a good thing. So underneath all my trees there, I have lots of cross-hatched background brushes. Morning, Kay. So I've used an underpainting technique with my, I can either use gesso or uh, you can use texture paste or you can use your canvas primer depending on what you have to hand and of course in these days when we are stuck at home we're using what we have to hand so i just wanted to show you that is what i like to do underneath my big paintings morning natalie and i do that on purpose underneath my my actual paintings so that it gives a little bit of interest in fact i had people here for a barbecue, grill, or braai, depending on what you want to call it. They were South Africans, so they came for a braai um, just before lockdown. And in actual fact, they thought it was a painting. I mean, they didn't realize it was a painting. They thought it was a photograph. So um, it is a painting. And now we're going to go for a walk past my 3D printer, the giant one. I'll show you my displays yes it's almost to the roof that's the roof i use suitcases for storage for all my arty stuff and as you can see i've got labels on them so that i can tell what's in my boxes in these case the boxes are suitcases now we're going to go across to this painting and again i'm using the light to try and show you the cross hatching underneath i don't know if you can see that um there you can see it so underneath the actual painting of this picture i had cross hatched brush strokes which i picked up at the end with some dry brushing and for me this just makes it slightly unusual and different and of course i have this thing where i paint onto my frame so i actually frame my work sorry we almost ended the live that was not intentional i'm walking around with my canvas or if, um we're starting this slightly differently i'm walking around hi angela from australia i'm walking around and i hope i don't cut you guys off when i put you guys in my holder above my desk um, so I'm panning back so you can see the whole painting so this painting I did in situ uh, yes I still have my cogs clock I love my cogs clock it's very popular with visitors um, 
I actually don't have the battery in the time side of it because it ticks too loudly but I have the, the motor going so that the cogs turn. So I'm showing you this so that you get an idea of where we're going with today's canvas preparation. Um, I'm going to zoom in one last time before we go for a walk to my studio which is right behind me. So I'm panning in. Hi Elizabeth. I'm panning in to show you my brush strokes that I have on my primed canvas underneath. And I put a board in my frame and prime the whole thing. So I even prime onto my frame so that I can paint on my frame. So this is my personal little um, trick on how to stand out. Okay, so now we're going to go walk about. Hope that that's outside. I'm going to have a quick look at my garden. Spring is definitely sprung, although some of you might have seen the snow on my daffodils. And half of that is not real because half of my garden died. Um, here is where all my canvases are. I've run out of space to stand them all up. Morning, Alice. Morning, Olga. So here are all my canvases. This is the entrance to my studio off the lounge. And so, yes, you get to see a little bit of a tour of my studio. I'm all set up and ready for you guys over there. Oh, look who's stolen my chair. I had very carefully thought I set a cat trap. He loves getting into my boxes and I put that's my jersey in there. I put that in there and when I left the room just now to take this video, he was happily in his cubby hole. But, okay, we're going to have to share the chair. So this is my setup for today. I have my paints on either side. They actually paints underneath my palette over there. And I'm going to try and put you in my contraption. This is my MacGyver job. My contraption above my desk. So that you guys, I hope you don't get seasick, so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, let's try not to cut you off because that can also happen while I'm trying to put you in the clip. There we go. Yay. Hopefully I didn't make you too seasick. Right, behave. I don't know how Tim Holtz does this. He always makes it look so easy. Okay. Right. Ah, no, don't slide. Sorry. The world is tilting on its axis. Try and get you to slide over. Okie dokie, behave. I'm going to have to... No, 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 no. Sorry, power off. Ah, this thing is so sensitive. Okay, these are the things that happen normally before I go live. I have num the number of times I've switched off my phone accidentally while putting it in this grip above my desk. And I'll find myself on my iPad so that I can see you guys. Because once you are up here on the on the stand I actually can't see um, I can't see your comments or who's visiting or anything but here I go um, found myself yes I need to have an easier clip but anyway that is life Olga and we can't go shopping right now when we decided to do this it was lastminute.com you know so on my desk today I have two canvases and I have got some of the photographs printed that I posted on my Facebook page for you guys to work from Olga's already done one and I'm very proud of her uh, she posted it on Instagram I don't think she's posted it on Facebook I copied I did a screenshot and posted it for you guys to see because it's always nice to see when somebody it's like Tim said it's always nice to see when somebody actually uses some of what you've been putting out there otherwise you feel like you're just waffling on to <laughs> for no reason so what I wanted to show you today and let's see if I can share my chair sorry Mr. May slide your bum okay can i perch on the edge thank you um so what i wanted to show you today is although i'm working from photographs that i've taken 
I wanted to show you some of Derek van Rensburg's work in the case. Okay, so this is a Cape Town artist, Derek van Rensburg. I have done some classes with him and he's a very well-known South African artist. And you can see here, this is a typical South African landscape with these gum trees that have come from Australia. These are not natural to South African vegetation, but they are around and they're quite prominent in our landscape because the African, in, especially in the Western Cape where, and Eastern Cape where I spent a lot of my time traveling, the, the trees are not, the natural vegetation trees are not huge. And you can see that he has interpreted, although there are some areas where there are big canola fields which are bright yellow, he has interpreted uh, what could be very dull and boring image into something quite creative. So just because you are working from a photograph that might have dull and boring colors doesn't mean that you can't change them. You don't have to replicate the photograph exactly as you see it. I quite often took these photographs, so this, if you look at the photograph, has got a lot of reflection on it from the window. It's probably my arm coming up there. When my husband, son and I used to travel down to see my gran, I perfected the art of snapping photographs out of the window. So there was no place to stop and pull over and it was a 10 to 12 hour trip as it was. So stopping every five minutes to take photographs for me was not really going to be an option. So just I, I took photographs as and when I could as reference for myself. And so I've put them out there for you to also use. You can copy the colors exactly as they are, but they're really rather dull. Um, the sky is a bit washed out. And you can see here how Derek has made a really vibrant sky, incredibly vibrant foreground. He's picked up the yellow of the fields. And I know, seeing how I've been in some of Derek's classes, he can take a very mundane looking photograph with weeds in the front and even a heap or like a rubbish heap he just ignores all of that he takes from the photograph what he wants to use and i learned an incredible amount from this man so i just want to show you another page that i've got marked off here from his book um so you'll probably find that he did this during springtime. I'm just going to check that I am in shot and that it's not reflecting. Um, there are places in South Africa where in springtime the fields are absolutely covered in flowers. And sometimes they're all white and it looks like snow. And here again he's got all sorts of colors going in the background and the farmhouse in the distance. So I wanted to show you how you can interpret the pictures and the paintings that you have so use reference and build your own color palette right so that's the inspiration so what i started morning michael what i started the live stream with was showing you some of my bigger canvases that i've done <clears throat> and we are going to prepare tomorrow's canvas so tomorrow's canvas, I'm in two minds as to which one to do today and which one to do tomorrow. Um, I think this will be tomorrow's canvas because there's more reason to show the brush strokes. So we're going to prepare this canvas and I will paint this as a demo today. What do I mean by prepare the canvas? Because it's already primed. I'm using this handmade canvas i say handmade because um a lot of the wrapped canvases that you can buy in shops are mass produced in factories in china and this is made by a company in claremont and i have come in claremont in cape town i have forgotten the name of the company it's gone straight out of my head i should make notes but anyway tough that's my artist brain it retains some information and it loses others mm -hmm. so this is made from pine and this is what's called a box canvas it has the deep edge i'm repeating some of what you might have heard before and as you can see it is raw fabric at the back 
and they have primed it with canvas primers so they have stretched the canvas using a staple gun and once they have actually put the canvas together you can see because there's no primer over here they have primed the canvas with canvas primer so yes technically i could just go straight on to painting on this canvas but i want to have some of the brush strokes underneath this picture for tomorrow and so when i prepared my giant canvases that you saw in my lounge i of course used a giant brush because well the surface space is so much bigger so i could do if i had to use this one i would have two big canvas markings on my canvas for the scale of my actual canvas so for this i'm going to scratch through my brushes and i'm going to use a smaller brush so to create the texture in the background you can use canvas primer you can use gesso you can use texture paste what is the difference gesso will flatten down it will still leave a texture but it will round off so even if you have some quite sharp um, undulations in your paint when you leave it to dry a lot of those will flatten out as you leave it to dry texture paste is what its name says it dries with textures so this has a lot more tooth gesso has some tooth what do i mean by tooth it has a kind of grit in it which allows your paint to stick to it so texture paste has a far 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 greater amount of texture in it you know sort of finished texture i am going to liken it to something along the lines of sandpaper so that you know you, you kind of get the gist of what i'm talking about this is quite smooth you almost can't feel the grit but this will be like a very fine grit sandpaper and just for fun for the sake of tomorrow and learning i'm going to do half my canvas with gesso and the other half with texture paste so that you guys get to see what the difference is when it dries and i'm going to start with gesso and Oh, this one is way down at the bottom. Let me see if I've got a better pot that's not so empty. I have lots of pots. Yeah, that one's better. Otherwise, I'm going to land up getting my brush. I don't feel like scooping some out. Otherwise, I'm going to get my brush handle all dirty and I really don't feel like that. So, I'm going to get a whole lot of gesso on my brush and I'm going to start applying the gesso to approximately halfway give or take and I need slightly more and it's entirely up to you how rough or smooth you want your brush strokes to be so at the moment I'm going to try and hold that at an angle and see if you can actually see that so at the moment I've got it incredibly rough hi Alexandra at the moment I've got it incredibly rough and that is not going to be ideal for painting on later because getting your paint into and under all those grooves is going to be awkward. So I'm just going to smooth those out and what did I mean by cross hatching? Well cross hatching is a term where you either draw, sorry I've got some lumps of dry paint from the edge, um, you either draw or um, paint in multiple directions I'm just trying to get these so you just make sure that your brush gives an even texture why is this so lumpy that's even why I chose to have a fresher right so I'm going to look at it at an angle in the light to make sure that I have Okay, there's still some finger marks where I and there's some raw canvas. It's quite difficult seeing, so I'm trying to do it flat so you guys can see, but I also need to see what I'm doing. Morning, Karen. And I'm just going to smooth that off. I'm not going to bother with cross hatching the edges of my canvas. I could, 
but really I just carry the picture on around the corner and okay so I have pretty even brush strokes going on over there and I need some roller tile on my desk for my fingers there we go okay so now I'm going to grab I have two of these brushes on my desk yes there we go it's not quite the same size but it'll do I'm going to pop that in some water close my gesso and just so that I remember I'm going to make a note on the side of my canvas over here that this side is the gesso and this side is the texture paste because well one needs to remember these things and tomorrow for whatever reason I might have forgotten so I'm now going to grab my texture paste and I'm going to lob some on. You can feel straight away it has a different consistency. And I'm going to spread it out initially. And get it from edge to edge so that I don't have bald patches like I did just now with my gesso. So of course you don't have to do two halves of your canvas if you're doing this at home like I know Olga's trying to trying to play along um, I'm just doing this for experimental purposes and to show you guys because I can and so now I've got it everywhere and I'm gonna hold it up again to see if you guys can see the difference it's quite difficult but you can see the side where the texture paste is is quite matte and that side is quite shiny so here we go I'm now going to cross hatch on this side and build some texture where my brush leaves the canvas it's kicking up quite a bit of of texture paste so I'm just being careful not to have too much of that going on and it's tilted so I can see if I've got an even texture going on. Okay, great. So I now have an even amount. And I'm going to smooth off the edge just with my finger because otherwise that will dry rough. And I still have, from my gesso, some dry paint going on in there. So... I'm going to have fingerprints there. That's not ideal. Get my gesso brush out, which is now full of water, which is also now not ideal. I'm going to dry it off on my roller towel. I just want to tidy up those fingerprints. Where else did I touch it? Okay, so that is now ready for tomorrow. I'm going to let it dry overnight. You could heat gun this. You could leave it in the sun if you had sunshine where you live to dry and then work on it later in the day. But because it's quite a thick medium, it is preferable to do this and leave it for a day. So 24 hours is a good benchmark for how long you should leave this to dry. If you are impatient like me and you've got nothing else to do some days and you prepare this in the morning and you've got beautiful sunshine, you can leave it outside to dry. Obviously if it's summer here, it is still, I think today is gonna to be a whole 10 degrees and we don't have much sun uh, where I stay. Certainly not on the one side of my flat, the other side maybe. But I've been putting bird food out for um, the birds to eat so that my mom has got something to watch during the day out of her window. And the chances of a bird adding a little bit of extra um, texture to, um, to my canvas as it flies by is rather large. So I won't be leaving it outside to dry. I'm going to put it somewhere where my cat won't stand on it because he has been known to walk on my canvases the minute they are drying somewhere i'm going to put it excuse me while i put it high up where he won't 
be going and hope that I remember where that is tomorrow <laughs> so that I'm not looking for it because the studio is a bit of a Bermuda Triangle I put things down and then can't find them again and I just had them okay so we're going to carry on with this picture and I have a square canvas well normally if I have a long picture like this I would have a long canvas but we're in lockdown and I can't go shopping for canvases well I could but I you see where I am we're not in complete lockdown we the hardware stores are still open and food stores and our hardware store carries a small art section and they probably would have some canvases but I I'm trying to only go out once a week to buy food and yesterday was that day so I'm using what I've got this is actually the last of my canvases that I have so somebody else was asking yesterday um, what is a good thing to paint on so if you're new to this and you happen to have some paints at home but you don't have canvases you can look around the house see what there is you can paint on cardboard you can paint on boxes if you're in a block of flats like me there's a recycling section where people throw things away and of course in Europe there's a lot of deliveries by Amazon and so on so you can go you can use a piece of cardboard you can use um, MDF you can use uh, for the I know cupboards at the back of cupboards there's a board uh, masonite you can paint on masonite so just you can paint on paper you can paint on whatever you have just give it a go it doesn't have to be you know these are trying times and we do what I call a MacGyver job so I'm now going to work from this picture today and I will not be needing a brush that size that's for sure let's see let's get my brushes out my three specials my new brushes this one as well where's my other new brush here okay these are all my filberts <laughs> and it's not because I've given them a name like William or George filbert is the style of the top so brushes do have names um, and I have got my watercolor brushes I've got some sucker sticks for grabbing paint out of and mixing paint let's just try and get this little corner a little bit more organized I've got some teeny tiny brushes for detail okay I think I have everything I need so when I do this canvas I'm going to be expanding this view across my canvas and when I start painting I start at the top and work my way down because I'm going to paint the sky and I'm going to paint a straight stripe of sky I'm then going to build my mountains onto it so I'm going to build on top on top on top on top until I get to the bottom because everything that I see in this picture um, as I was standing taking the photographs the closest thing is obviously the bit that is in front so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab yesterday's pot of paint if I can find it yes there it is in such a small studio you would think well I can literally reach both sides if I stand in the middle um, the most amazing part is that it looks almost like a picture <laughs> <clears throat> okay so I'm going to again just go with the same sky and I can't remember I think I used cerulean to not cerulean phthalo glue to mix this pot this pot came from South Africa already mixed so I'm just using it up and I am looking in my arsenal of brushes for a decent sized not too stiff brush for the background and today I'm going to be a good girl and I'm going to use instead of using my craft table as a brush I do not need my mouse I do not need my glue I do not need tomorrow's picture I do not need uh, there I go putting my finger in the paint do not need these guys there's not enough space to push back and clear you know that push back and clear technique right there I don't need a paintbrush for now I'm trying to get space for that there we go okay 
So I'm going to grab some paint and I'm going to do, so if I had to fold this in half, so for those of you who, you could sketch this out first. So you could take a pencil and you could sketch this out first. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. Or you could, for those of you who feel you can't draw, you could blow this up a bit bigger on your computer and you could use some carbon paper, like typing sheets, carbon paper, and you could pop your carbon paper down. You'd Obviously, if you've only got one sheet, you would need to then pop your picture, which would match the same size of your canvas, and you would trace it on, remembering to shift your canvas if um, you need to. This is the easiest way to get an image onto a canvas if you feel you can't draw. So I know I've seen in the chat underneath yesterday's aloe, some people feel that they couldn't, um, that they wouldn't be able to do that. And I understand, I totally get that. Drawing, drawing is something like, as I said, riding a car, driving a car. It's something that you learn. There is a wonderful book called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. And for the life of me, I can't remember the author's name. And they have lots of exercises, like learning to ride a bike, like learning anything. When you were a kid, you couldn't do ABC and you couldn't read and write. But, you know, you go to school for that. And art is very much like that. One can learn absolutely anything. One just has to get over the fear of trying. I'm not asking you to post your pictures on Facebook or anywhere else. You don't have to. It's a personal walk. If you want to, that's great. Um, you can do what some of my students still do, which is to send it to me on Messenger, or in some cases they still have my number, so they send it to me on WhatsApp. I'm quite happy to help you with it in the background. You don't have to do it on Facebook. Okay, so now I've got a blue sky going. There were no clouds in on this day. It was a beautiful sunny day. Morning, Michael. Thanks for popping in. And <clears throat> so I have a frog in my throat. Oh, and they're drilling upstairs again. I hope you can't hear that. Okay, so I'm going to come down. So I'm coming down further than that little strip of sky is. Why? Because my mountains are not a uniform shape. And I'm going to pop my brush down over here. I think I'm finished with this blue for now. I'm just going to close it. <clears throat> and so now I'm going to start with these background hills. And I'm going to start with some white, which I have in a small jar. And that's what these sucker sticks are great for, because I don't want to put my dirty brush in here. I had a wonderful student called Brian. And Brian used to moan in the studio because there were just general studio brushes available for everybody used to use. Brian used to moan about all the colors that were in the paint. So I said, that's it. I'm tired of everybody complaining that everybody else is messing because it was never them. There's never anybody, you know, in my studio. I had 40 people through my studio on a weekly basis. So I decided that's it. I'm going to issue everybody with their own tub of paint with their name on and how they treated their paint was entirely up to them. Well, it was very interesting to see that dear Brian was the worst culprit. His paint was terrible. It was hysterical. So I used to keep each class, class's stuff in a separate box with, for argument's sake, Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Tuesday evening, whatever it was. And I, he would open his paint on a Tuesday evening class and he'd say, somebody's been using my paint. Look at this. And he would show me his pot, which would be full of colors. And it would be full of the colors he had been using the previous week. So I'd say, um, just have a look at your canvas. And you might notice that actually it might be your fault. So I use sucker sticks to get my color out. And I'm looking at my picture and I'm looking to see what colors I'm possibly going to need. So I've got some cobalt blue out. I'm definitely going to be needing some Prussian blue which is also known as navy blue. I'm going to be needing some sap green, which is kind of an olivey green. 
and I'm definitely going to be needing some yellow ochre. Squeeze that out over there. And <clears throat> right, so I'm going to start with those colors out. What else might I need? That's probably it for now. Maybe some raw sienna, which is a shade darker than the yellow ochre. And quite possibly my 705, which is my answer to everything. You have to move to the other side of the house. Drilling, your hubby's drilling too. Yes, I think there's a lot of house renovations going on. In fact, one of my friends posted on Facebook, she's had to hide the tools because her hubby is not known as the handiest man. And she's a bit afraid she'll hurt himself while trying to attempt to do some DIY. So, okay, and just because I think, so there's a song I grew up with singing as a kid, the, um, all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. And one of the verses has the purple headed mountains. And if you happen to live where there are mountains, mountains in the distance are often hazy and they get that sort of purple hue. And here they even have a fairly purple hue. Here where I live in Berlin, there's not a mountain to be seen for kilometers. And I kid you not, I took a train trip to go and fetch my aunt, my mom from where my aunt was, uh, where my aunt lives, aunt and cousin lives, on the other side of Germany. I don't think I saw a mountain for seven hours on a train. Hills maybe, short ones, like little ones, like what we in South Africa would call kopis. They're like little. I really wouldn't call them a mountain. Um, so, right, I'm going back to my brush which had the blue in because my mountains here are kind of purpley and I'm going to mix myself a purple-ish color because I want so I'm using the paint that's in my brush and I'm not washing my brush for the simple reason that I really don't want water in my brush if I can at all help it so I'm mixing a purple-ish color Alisa to start with these mountains in the background and because as I said my picture here is narrow and this is square I'm just going to spread my mountains out I'm using this for reference I'm not looking to repeat it completely and today I don't I forgot to bring the kitchen clock so I have no idea how long I've been yakking for we will just carry on so at this stage, yes, it is very purple. So I'm going up there, down there, along that ridge, along there, it comes down here. Then we have this hill, which seems to almost have a flat top and it comes down there. And then there's a background hill there. So I've kind of sketched it out and I'm going to now start building my colors so you'll notice that i've used the front of my brush same as i did with my circles towards the edge that i want to keep nice and crisp and so i'm going to just start building some shadows and colors yes it's very flat here for european mountains <laughs> we'll have to go to the alps <laughs> it's a three day trip thanks olga yeah, I must say, coming from Cape Town where we had a thundering great mountain in the middle of the city, it's very disconcerting that there's absolutely no landmarks here other than a tower called, um, which is round. So you never know which side of it you can see from a distance. And that's on Alexanderplatz. So now I'm just building shadows in my background over here of where the light was hitting it and I'm using the Prussian blue um, this piece I'm gonna leave quite pale and in the background there <clears throat> right I need a little bit more of the Prussian blue on this hill okay great 
there's still hills coming in front and again I'm bringing it further down than I need because I can work over it so here I seem to have a bit of a curve going on and then it goes that way so I'm going to build my shadows going this way I can also brush up the hill and I want to make it quite a deep shadow on this side right now I think I need to go and because this is coming down in front of that hill over there I need to finish that hill so I can tidy up this edge over here so I'm going to go back to this color over here and I'm going to it's quite a bit darker on that side because that's my shadow side and again it's very helpful for me who obviously likes all my shadows on the left hand side but this day that I took this photo the sun was to my right so I'm going to just build and I think I'm going to take a little bit of green now for the middle bit over here and I'm going to build this funny shaped hill <clears throat> Mom and I often have conversations about sunrises and sunsets and mountains and things and how if I was to paint that it would look ridiculous it would look like I made it up nature is just quite incredible sometimes and sometimes it looks quite unreal so I'm building this hill in the background and it's got a dark line there and it's got another dark line over here and some shadow coming that way <clears throat> real frog in my throat this morning right so this mountain's coming down there and then there's a darker mountain in the background over here so I'm going to build it again you'll notice I'm using the front of my brush towards this line that I want to get nice and neat and I'm going to build it there And my shadow is quite deep over here, so I'm using Prussian. I don't use black very often for shading because it kind of kills things. Now I was a bad, bad girl. Having told you guys to work around the sides of your canvas, I have not done that. Oops. Okay, I'll catch up with the sky later, but this mountain needs to go around the edge while I have that color still on my brush. So thankfully the sky is in a pot over there, but this is now a mix, which will be very difficult to make up later. So I'm going to just bring that around that edge there with a little bit more depth. Right. Okay. And what did I do on this side? Oops, I had some purple going. Right, let's finish that off bad bad girl not following my own rules okay almost finished that one off now I need to go into my blue because that's what I had going over here and bring that round the corner then I had some darker blue and okay that's about as far as I am Yay. Managed to catch that one in time. So now I've got a bit of the highlight side. So that will be some of my ochre. And I'm going to put that over there like that. And so one of the things that I used to teach my students was have a look at how something flows and try and use the same directional brush strokes as what you can see because it helps to build your object just using not even shapes and shadows but just using your brush in the right direction definitely helps create the right effect. 
so I'm gonna bring this hill is coming down in front of that guy and so I've got a little bit more shadow happening over here it's a bit of a wiggle and I've got a bit of a hollow happening so I'm gonna just bring in a little bit more of this blue for the shadow effect and down there because when these mountains were formed under pressure they were tipped and angled and so on now I'm going to come back to some of my ochre in my brush because ochre is essentially a yellow and I've got green on my brush so it's going to I mean blue on my brush so it's going to give me this greeny sort of color and I'm not wanting these guys to be the main focus of my picture when I'm finished this is going to be my main focus so I'm keeping the colors kind of soft in the background so today's picture is all about kind of going realistic and doing what you see except of course I'm spreading it out now I need to put in this little hill He's going to come in over here and I say him, could be a girl I guess. I don't know if any of you have ever watched Bob, Bob Ross. He has happy little trees and things need friends. He's great fun. I'm grabbing a little bit of white. It's a happy little hill. He's got some sunshine on this side. That's too much white. Grab a bit more color on this happy little hill. Right. So now I have this great big hill, this guy that's got to come across the back there and I need to bring this down a little bit what was happening over there and maybe bring this down a little bit just using my dirty brush right now we need to put that in and it's got a very definite sort of warm tone to the top and I'm gonna grab a little bit more white because I want it to come in front white so you get different types of white and some whites are thicker than others and have more coverage. So I suggest you research all of that kind of information. So now we have this hill happening here. And now that I've got this lighter color, I think I'm going to add a little bit more of a highlight over there on this hill. And I'm going to pick up this edge a little bit more to make it stand out there we go these are things you build as you go along right so now I've got this bit going on here that gets a bit darker as it comes down I'm now going to build because this is in front I'm now going to build this guy over here who has quite a hectic steep angle and it kind of mirrors that one and we're gonna go swing up to there and I'm gonna bring that little area around here things have to have sound effects my students used to laugh at me things go swing and swoosh okay so that's quite a steep hill so I want I want it to feel steep so I'm wanting my brush strokes to build over there right I'm starting to run out of canvas I'm making it like I've got this massive canvas I need to still bring in a whole lot of water okay so we're gonna push this back and we're gonna go quite green with a little bit of ochre on this side this little copy over here now you see I'm trying to use the side of my brush and it's giving me fuzzy edge 
So I'm going to do that and I'm going to come with the front of my brush along here and I'm going to build it this way. And not forgetting while I have all this dirt on my brush to go round the corner, Jack Corner. Needs a little bit more green. And okay. I now need to build this guy in. So that is quite brownish. And we're going to start up here. And we're going to come along and we're going to go down the hill. And we're going to come down the hill and I'm going to chop this one off at its knees. Chop it off. Chop it off because I need the space. Chop it off at its knees. And I need to bring it up a bit more. Right, I need some of this warmer color up here. Because here this cliff face is facing down and I need to <clears throat> so again I'm using my brush strokes to help with the creation of the folds in the mountain right so now I've got that going on and I'm now going to build this green shrubbery area so I'm going to start with green and just so that I've got a base color and again I've got to remember to go around the corner and I didn't do that with this over here so this hill needs to continue right <clears throat> so I'm going to grab some more green and build so that when I, I'm doing this green base so that when I build my texture on top of it I don't have white shining through because the minute you have white shining through your eye will go to that bright color so am I the female Bob Ross Olga my nice soft voice my happy hills. Okay, so now I'm going to grab some more green on my brush. And I know I've got a great big flat brush. You could change to a round tipped brush. You could change to a smaller brush. But I generally do grab one brush and, and go for it. So now I'm going to add texture. So I've been using my brush in directional manner up until now but now I'm going to stab at the canvas with my brush and you'll notice I will pounce my brush down then I and and you can see what I call a footprint of a brush and because it's overloaded over there not so loaded there so if I had to keep going in the same direction I'm going to get a very similar footprint so I keep changing the angle of my brush as I pounce it down to try and stop seeing that footprint happen okay and it is for this reason that I work from the top down so now these fluffy brush strokes will give the illusion of bushes onto the guy that's behind the guy. I have male mountains apparently. Right, so I'm building my texture. So now I've done it with my green. I must remember to go around my signs like a good girl, like a good student. Okay, now I'm going to build in my shadows because remember in the last few lessons we have worked from light to dark. So now you build no, that's my goal. I need to go into my Prussian blue. And I'm going to build some shadows in places because that's what makes things. And I know this is the scary part. People hate putting dark on because they find it quite intimidating. 
they feel they can't paint over it well you can you just need a different you need to put some white in it usually happy little mountains now we got happy little bushes happening and if you're not an engineer you who i say this because i had an engineer student no names mentioned no fingers pointed nature doesn't grow in straight stripes so it's very tempting and we all fall into this if you are doing a field of flowers if you're doing bushes if you're doing anything along those lines it's very tempting do you want to line everything up well nature's very random so you need to have some things grouped together some things further apart and so these dark areas are really shadows in bushes and things so i'm gonna grab some paint and i'm gonna make some very definite dark lines along the bottom here where the bottom of the shrubbery is happening against this waterline okay so it kind of grounds it and there's some other longer things now i'm going to let this dry for a little while and come back to it and add some highlights so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to put in my water and at this stage i'm going to cover my whole canvas in my cobalt blue which means i either need to wash my brush or grab another brush so i'm just going to grab another brush and for this i'm grabbing a soft bristled brush and that isn't going to be enough paint so i'm actually going to squeeze paint straight onto my canvas morning rod and spread it out water will always have a flat horizon and any of you who've been in my classes you've painted any water so at this stage i'm just getting the paint on so i really am not bothered about the direction of my brush strokes i'm really just trying to work it into my canvas so that i don't have and i'm going to hold it up at an angle can you see those little white dots you want to kill all those white dots get rid of them because your eye will go to those immediately as soon as there is something light so i'm working backwards and forwards like this to try and work it into the tooth of my canvas so my initial way of applying the paint is a bit like and i'm going to grab that is a bit like what i did to get my texture paste and gesso onto my canvas so i'm having a good i'm using a fair amount of pressure and then you'll see once i get this on i'm going to even it out because water lies flat it is horizontal and this of course it's a storm and even a lake can have waves and you'll notice with this brush as i put my brush down and go I, it leaves it leaves a mark where I started and I stopped so I start off my canvas and if I'm coming back again I start off my canvas so that I don't have these little marks and especially these soft bristle brushes seem to do it the most so now being a good girl I'm going around my edges and I might need more paint so I'm just gonna grab the last vestiges of that for now I'm not going to paint the bottom because I need to be able to grab it. Okay, I need some more cobalt blue. And in actual fact it's quite amazing. This scene that I'm painting is from Nature's Valley and the water is so not blue. It is brown. It is brown because it's run through all the vegetation on the mountains and it has picked up all the tannins from the vegetation and gone brown but what is so amazing is it is reflecting the sky so water is like a mirror it will reflect what is around it and it is reflecting the sky above it and it is looking blue so i think that is quite amazing so as we discussed yesterday 
things that are further away are smaller so your brush strokes need to be smaller and things that are closer to you the um, brush strokes need to get larger so over here in my water I've got tiny 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 little little ripples happening you could they're almost a blur and as they get closer they get further apart and they get bigger so I'm going to try and emulate this by adding and I need some brown here because the water was brown and I'm not going to use the navy blue I could use the navy blue but um, I'm feeling like I need a little bit of another color going um, at this stage ignoring the grass and I know I said to work light to dark but the problem is the softness um, of the grass needs to go over the top of the water so you can't put your grass in and then try and make those lines happen between your grass because you will always see the start stop start stop start stop so it is preferable for a picture like this to start with your water and then build your grass and things on top and I have the heavy body paint which will cover anything it's like Tipex the heavy body being um, Kryla by Daily Rani um, Dela Rani heavy body um, so if your colors are very very heavy that you're trying to work on top of with a light color that will work also this color definitely has white in it and white as I said earlier is um, going to cover most things so I'm now going to come and yes I've got a great big brush but I'm going to come with a little bit of this brown on my brush and I'm going to try and create these little waves far back and what's also happening is that my brush is taking because my paint is still wet my brush is taking off some of the paint uh, of the blue as I'm trying to put on the brown and it's very hard to talk <laughs> and paint I tend to paint in silence when I work by myself and I'm trying to keep everything horizontal I'm also trying to keep my head out of your picture so I'm using teeny tiny little brush strokes over here and where I brought my mountain down is showing through because I got a bit carried away with my background before I realized there oops I'm going to land up with so I'm landing up with almost half half canvas which is not my ideal I would prefer two thirds of this to be water or to so you can see when I took the photograph my water line was above my halfway line so I'm pretty much landed up with halfway but anyway we carry on it is what it is so I'm trying to keep my water horizontal because that's what water does naturally and as I'm working I'm now starting to get bigger and bigger spaces in between my brush strokes <clears throat> trying to make them uneven it is instinctive to want to try and line them up and make even spaces in between them and I'm going to leave a patch over here and now I need a little bit more brown on my brush and oops that's too much brown right come away come away right i'll just work off what's on my brush and i'm leaving bigger and bigger gaps and the water here in the front is quite a lot lighter really don't like what i did there so i'm going to try and come back with some blue there we go and there's water right off these edges okay I'm quite liking where this is going but at this stage I need to now dry it because I want to show you a trick that I learned from Derek 
which is to work with masking tape to keep things real with water. So I'm just building a few more darker areas because as the wind blows over water it creates these different ripples. I'm just creating a few more dark spots down here because I'm going to grow some grasses from here just now and they need some shadows to grow in. Right, now I'm just going to blow dry this. Hi Tracy! <laughs> East London, yes, so this is almost on your doorstep, this is Nature's Valley. Right, so now I've done that, I'm going to give this a quick blow dry. And where do you suppose my masking tape is? There it is. <clears throat> so I'm just giving this a dry. Oh, here's an avalanche. So this is why I like acrylics because it's fairly instant and you can build your layers quite quickly. You can use a hairdryer, this is a heat gun. Hairdryer will just take a little longer if you don't have any of the above you can stick it outside in the sunshine that I don't have. Well it is sunny today but it's yeah. So. What I want to show you is this one, which is worked from a similar photograph um, taken in the same place. And to create these feelings of different areas in the water and to create your horizon line, I've used masking tape. And in fact, I even use a piece of masking tape over there to create the sail of the little boat that my husband happened to be on when I took that photograph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some masking tape to create some points of interest across the canvas. So there is a bit of a highlight happening here in the water and I'm going to bring, oops, my paint's still a bit wet there. So I'm going to bring, bring it in there. And there's definitely some highlight over here so I'm gonna have whoops piece of paper piece of masking tape ready over here and another one so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back with some lighter color so I'm gonna mix some blue on my brush and technically I should be a good girl and take this round the corner so I'm going to just use a longer piece because I haven't taken any of that texture around the corner but I'm going to take a longer piece and also now that it's dry I can see a couple of holes in my blue I'm going to take that around the corner and I'm going to drag my brush up just get it on that edge drag my brush up and I'm gonna drag my brush and I'm gonna let it fade out so I'm gonna press really hard over here and I'm gonna lift up as I go I'm going to and see what that gives me And that gives me a nice line there. I'm going to move it down a little bit. So I'm not sticking it over my wet paint. I'm going to do the same here. This is for those of you like me who cannot paint a straight line without help. And remembering to go around the side. 
need more paint on my brush. See, I went skewed. Oh, behave. No, that's too much. Okay, bringing that back from here. And we will do another one just above it. Great. Now I'm going to come in from this side with a bit of dark. So I'm going to come with a bit of dark from this side. Nope. I know there's going to be a whole lot of bushes and things happening there. Oh, good grief. Let's just fix that. A little bit of finger painting. Okay, and I can still see my mountain through, which is bothering me. So I'm going to, now that this is dry, I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight through over there. Hiding, hiding my, whoops. And working into this a little bit. Just giving it a few more waves. And I definitely need to have this area paler in the front. So darker things go away from you and lighter things come towards you. So I'm having lighter water over here. And remember I said to you that the sky reflects into water. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to bring back some of my sky. Now what I want to do is get rid of some of my paint that's on my brush without washing it because water is not my friend. So I'm going to come back with some of my sky color down here because that's what's reflecting closest to me. Right. There's a little bit of a highlight on this side between my bushes. And not forgetting to go around the corner. A little bit of a highlight there. Okay. So now I'm quite happy with my water. I could probably come back with a few highlights here and there, but not too many. And I'm mostly going to do them on one side. I'm using the flatness of my brush. Because um, the water was quite still here up close to me. And I'm just trying to give the feeling of a little bit of movement further away and if it's landing up too spotty because I've got a blob of paint on there well you can always just wipe it with your finger 
Right, so I'm going to leave that at this stage and I'm going to come and build some grass. And for that, I'm looking for a scrappy old brush. Oh, it's so old, it's falling apart. I'm looking for a brush that has been around the block for a while. Maybe this one. Maybe this one. Possibly that one. And I'm now going to create these uh, reeds. And I'm going to do that by creating some... Now I'm using my blue. Let's see if I've still got some clean white over here. And I'm going to use the straightness of my brush just along that grassy area over there. And I'm going to build my... Sorry, I can't talk and paint, apparently. I'm going to build my little grassy area over there. And it kind of comes out into the water a little bit and has so i'm using this brush far away because i know i can control the thickness of it and i'm just building at this stage remembering to go around my sides i'm building my horizon And I'm using quite a lot of white because the white will override my dark blue. See, rules are made to be broken. And I've gone, I'm using too much of the flatness of my brush. Perhaps I should use the other side. When I say rules are made to be broken, well, I always advocate that in acrylics you work from light to dark. And... Right, I'm now starting to need my old destroyed brush and build a better... So when I say destroyed brush, the bristles, these are too perfect. I need bristles that are going to leave little grasses in my ground over here. Because as it's starting to get closer, so over there it's really far away, so I can't really see detail with my 40 something year old eyes I can't really see detail anyway but anyway I digress so now I'm going to start building my grasses and the little tufts and the little island that's coming out into into the water not forgetting to go round the side and of course this would all be island of reeds happy little reeds okay almost finished with them i just want a few more divine defined areas and again because this isn't the same size as that canvas hi shamila i'm not really sticking to the proportions but i'm kind of so now I'm going to build this area over here and there's some greener bits over here so I'm going to come with a little bit of my sap green and a little bit more of my ochre and I'm going to build this little island that's over here and I'm going to build the flatter bits first um, and my brush is misbehaving Okay, and I'm going to have some green. This brush is too perfect. I need this one. So I'm going to load this one up. It's too flat. It's too square. It's not giving me my mess that I want. There we go. So I want a mess <laughs> of brush strokes. I don't want perfect square little chopped off edges. There we go. That's better. And I'm building... So I'm grabbing lots of different colors on, on my brush 
and building the little islands where they are growing from the riverbank. Okay, that's two ochre. Right, so this is my underneath layer that I'm building. And there's a bit more green over there. And definitely round the sides. Okay. And now I'm going to grab... Uh, Where's my O? Oh, both are being washed. Uh, I like to use great big fluffy brushes for my reeds now. Fluffy but stiff. So these are um, what I used to prime my other canvas. They are house brushes. You know, you get them in the hardware department at stores. So I'm just going to dry it off on my studio rag. Because I need it nice and dry. No water in my brush. So what I'm looking for is a nice misbehaving brush to create these bristles. And so I'm loading my brush. And now I'm going to, I just want a little bit more color in my brush. I'm testing it on here. And now I'm going to build you can do that. Um, needing a bit more color. I'm usually happier doing the skidding motion. Trying to get my brush to behave. Okay, so now I want one last I want these to come from here, so but now I need my shadow areas. Now I'm going into my brown. And then all these things need a shadow. And I'm going to grab, I don't want this perfect brush again, I'm going to grab this guy who's a hog hair brush and I'm going to give, so what makes these guys feel like they are grounded is you do the same process from the bottom with a little bit of the dark and you skid it up into your into your reeds and we're almost done i'm just building my shadows and just getting it up into these guys and giving some of my highlights in my water a couple of shadows and building some shadow in the background there and definitely over here because this is what Grounds it in the front. Definitely some shadow area over here. And that's pretty much it. I'm done. Obviously, I still need to do the bottom. And I still need to finish around this edge, which didn't get any light bushes. But let's just see what's left on my brush. Yeah. 
I'm quite happy with that. Right. Ta-da! Done. No sound. Must be on your side. I hope there's still sound. I can't hear myself on online. So that's today's lesson done, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. I will finish this off at the bottom and put in a few more details over here and post the finished picture. And I feel like I need to come back and add a bit more color over here on this mountain. But that's it. See you tomorrow, guys. Bye.